before you watch this video, we gotta do this. If you like Python, cool. And you enjoy coffee, continue. Let's do this. Else, I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> Why are you here? Welcome to episode six of my Python Right Now series, where I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to become dangerous in Python. In this episode, whoo, get ready. We're gonna get more control over our Python programming. And so far we've done a great job because we've kept Evil Ben from coming into our coffee shop. But we have a new problem. Evil Ben isn't the only person we have to worry about now. Now we have Evil Patricia. Patricia! Get it together, sweetie. We have a show this weekend. Evil Patricia is way worse than Ben, and we have to keep her from entering our coffee shop. But to do this, we have to gain some new skills. Skills we're going to talk about here in this video. We're no longer looking for just Ben, if name equals Ben. Now we're like, if name equals Ben, and also Patricia? How, how are we going to do that? It's a thing called logical operators, and yeah, they're fun, so get ready. And the best part is, you don't need a dang thing to do this. Just like every episode in this course, you will have access to a free, Python lab right here in your browser. So check that link below and get signed up. And uh, oh, you know what? I forgot one thing. You need coffee. By now you should know that. I mean, how else did you get past my if statement at the beginning of this video? If you're here, you already have coffee, right? And a massive shout out to our sponsor of this entire series and the reason it can be free here on YouTube, IT Pro TV. If you really wanna get serious about your IT career or you're like, hey, I wanna get into IT, you need to check out IT Pro TV. They're the, by, just by far, <laughs> the best learning platform out there. I use IT Pro TV to keep myself up to date on all the new technologies and just to learn new stuff. Wherever you're at in your IT journey, they have you covered from foundational skills. If you jump in there real quick, dude, check this out, that's pretty slick. So IT fundamentals, just dip your toe in the water of IT, then build up some Linux skills, routing and switching, customer service. I mean, dude, <laughs> this is so cool. So for those of you who ask me, hey, how do I get started in IT? Follow this stinking path right here. Because not only will you get to learn a ton of stuff, but you're doing things hands-on. They have hands-on labs built into this, which is really handy when you go for the more advanced things. Like, uh, I don't know, Python? <laughs> if you wanna learn more Python than what I'm showing you here, they have a ton of stuff. Python for networking professionals, Python for security. Where'd it go? Yeah, right here. And pretty much anything you want to learn in IT. So if you're ready to take your IT career seriously and you wanna learn IT like me, check it out, link below. Use the code NETWORKCHUCK and you'll get 30% off forever. <laughs> so do it now. Anyways, back to learning Python. Okay, let's get started. So if you haven't already, open up the lab for Python episode six, day one. If you're like, well, I don't know where that is, well then check the link below and get signed up, man. Come on, it's free. Now so far, our robot barista, Bouncer, is doing a fantastic job. And we did a great job in telling him how to do a great job. Because in the last few videos, we said, hey, let's do some if statements to figure out and filter through the evil Bens. If their name is Ben, and they are evil, because not all Bens are evil, remember? They can come in. But now, now we got a different problem, don't we? Because evil Patricia is on the scene. Our robot barista bouncer is not prepared to prevent evil Patricia from coming in, so we gotta change that right now. So if we look at our code, we can see that we're already saying, hey, if the variable name is equal to Ben, if that evaluates to true, then kick him out. Or also if he's evil. But now we have to evaluate, hey, not only does name have to equal Ben, it also could equal Patricia, then kick her out too. To do that, new concept time. Something called logical operators. And watch this, this is pure magic. And it's so simple too, elegant. Over here, let's go ahead and do this together. Where it says if name equals Ben, right before our colon, let's hit a space. And then we'll put in this, type in or, O-R. <laughs> Check that out, as we finish that R, it changed colors. And now we can type in name, equals the string Patricia. <gasps> Ooh, powerful, right? With one simple if statement, we're evaluating if one thing is true or something else is true. If Ben comes in, dude, this is true. If Patricia comes in, dude, this is true. And now we have the power to kick Patricia out. Let's test it out. Let's run our code. Click on run. What's your name? Let's test our code real quick. Let's say our name is Ben. Ben, I'm evil Ben. I'm not welcome here, get out. Let's run it again. Let's test an average person like Cameron. Cameron's a good guy, right? Oh, Cameron came right in. But now, let me stop that script. The beard thing, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a bit. Let's run it again. This time we are evil Patricia. So my name's Patricia. Are you evil? Yeah. <laughs> we 
got it. And again, this is so cool because we don't have to have name equal both Ben and Patricia. No, it can be either or. So powerful, man, so many use cases. And I may have noticed, and this is kind of annoying, it's annoying to me anyway, uh, here in our print message, we're like, you're not welcome here, Ben? But that was Patricia. Patricia at this point is super confused. Like, I'm not Ben, I am evil. I am Patricia, but I'm not Ben. So real quick, use your skills that you've learned so far in this course and fix that for me real quick. Pause and unpause. Let's fix it. Super simple, right? If you watched all the previous episodes, we basically have to do what we're doing here in our else statement. We have to use the name variable and concatenate that with our print statement. So I'll do that real quick. Instead of putting Ben right here, we'll remove all that right there. I'll make that first part a string on its own. And I'll say plus the variable name, which should be Patricia or Ben, plus the other string. We're concatenating all kinds of stuff all over the place. Type in Patricia and we'll yell at her. Get out of here. Good work, let's try it out. Oh, forgot my closing parenthesis on the print statement. There we go. Run, I am Patricia. I am indeed evil. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Why did I say Patricia twice? I just realized what I did here. This is what happens when you try to teach and type. <laughs> now let me run that. That was weird. Perfect, that works now. So we cover the logical operator or. Super powerful, but not the only one. And it's a good thing because we have another case we have to look at here. Another requirement for our robot barista bouncer. The other day I was watching Loki on Disney Plus. You ever seen it? It's amazing. And in watching that show, I realized that being evil isn't black and white. Because Loki does bad things. He certainly is evil, but he also does good things. Which that reminds me, Loki is totally evil. So if Loki ever comes to our coffee shop, real quick challenge for you. Let's make sure Loki that's a different color. Let's make sure Loki can't come in. Can you add that to our script real quick? Pause the video, see what you got. Unpause, I'm gonna add it real quick. This is what you would do. Ben or Patricia, <laughs> or yeah, you could do another or, three or, or no, that's only two. Two ors, I can count, I promise. Name equals Loki. Let's try that out real quick. If Loki comes in, yeah, he's evil. Got it, okay, cool. So, <laughs> back to my story. Yes, Loki is evil, but sometimes he does good things and I wanna account for that. I wanna factor that in. So essentially, here's what I want. We're gonna make this super complicated because we have to, we're IT people. Here we go. I want if Ben comes in and Ben is evil, he answers yes. And let's say if he's done four or more good deeds that day, he can come in even if he is evil. So how would we do that? Now I know things are getting a bit confusing. That's why we're going to flowchart mode. Here we go. Flowcharts. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's not scary at all. So here is the logical view of what we're doing in our script. What's your name? Is your name Ben or Patricia? And also Loki, let me add that. If the answer is no, then come on in. If the answer is yes, let's make sure you're not evil. Are you evil? No, come on in. Yes, get out. But now we wanna say, with our new logic, how many good deeds have you done today? If less than four, get out of here. You're still evil. But if you've done four or more good deeds, then hey, come on in. I can work with that. I love me some anti-heroes, yeah. Now this should be a fun one because you can do this in probably a million different ways. But I wanna challenge you to use logical operators to make this happen. And remember, so far we've already covered the or logical operator, but let me introduce a new one for you real quick and I'm not gonna tell you how to use it because I think it's kind of intuitive and I want you to try it out. Just mess with it and break it. Another one is and. I want you to try and use the and logical operator. Oh, and also let me do this. I'm gonna put you into a tighter box on what you can do. Only change this one if statement to make this happen. Only that one. Okay, for real, go. Pause me and see what you got. Unpause, let's work through this real quick. So here with our task, we pretty much have two things we have to accomplish. First, we have to find out, hey, how many good deeds have Loki, Patricia, or Ben completed today? And just like their evil status, all we have to do is just ask them because why would they lie about that? Duh, man, they're, they're not crazy, they're just evil. So <laughs> just under evil status, We'll set a new variable, we'll call it good underscore deeds. And we'll have that equal an input, because we're gonna ask them, hey, how many good deeds have you done today? And we'll do a little backslash and end to make it pretty, put some space there. But hold up, quick quiz. This ain't gonna work and why? And I, yeah, I did say ain't, it's okay. Why won't this work? <laughs> It's because, again, the input function will use a string by default. We have to convert that to an integer, so we'll just wrap that little input function there with an int <laughs> integer function around it. Perfect. So now how many good deeds they have done will be stored in the good deeds variable. So now for the second part of this task, we need to add some logic here. So let's get to our if statement over here and make some changes. So just after this yes, 
I'm gonna put a new operator in. We just talked about it. It's going to be and. So I'll go A, N, D, color change. We know something's happening, magic's happening. Hit space, and I'll see if evil status is yes, and good deeds. And I'll use one of our comparison operators, less than four. That should do it. Yeah, I think it should do it. So check it out, here's what's happening. In order for this if statement to evaluate to true, both the evil status must be yes, and their good deeds must be less than four. So if they're evil and they've only done two good deeds, then bam, this statement's true, and we'll print, get your stinking hide out of here. You're not welcome, you're too evil for this place, this establishment. And that's what the and operator does for us. It's not just saying this or this, either could be true, it's saying both of these suckers have to be true in order for us to continue. So let's try it out real quick, run. This time, I'm just gonna be a Loki, why not? I'm Loki, am I evil? Of course, yes. But how many good deeds have I done today? Let's say we've, we've been good. We did seven good deeds today. Oh, <gasps> we made it in. Yeah, we were evil, but hey, we made up for it. That's how that works, right? I don't know, <laughs> probably not. But now let's see what happens if we didn't do enough good deeds. Let's run it. What's my name? I am Patricia. Am I evil? Of course I am. How many good deeds? I've only done two good deeds today. Oh, now welcome here, less than four deeds. Whew, man, take yourself a coffee break because right now, <laughs> with the power of Python, we solve the problem of evil. Kind of, we didn't solve it, we just were able to de detect if evil people are walking into our coffee shop. And now our robot barista bouncer is doing a killer job. But also real quick, I kind of have a, a brain breaking scenario here. It's gonna hurt a little bit. So we covered the or logical operator and the and logical operator. But there's another one that I don't really use often, but it's there, but I think it's worth mentioning because it'll help you understand if statements even more. And this is the not operator. Now to talk about this, let's go ahead and launch lab two for this episode, episode six. And we got a bit of a clean slate here. And here, we're gonna use the same logic as before. If Ben comes in, don't let him in. And we strip things down. It's very simple here so I can illustrate this. My pen! Sorry, evil Ben strikes again. That rhymed a lot. Anyways, now let's just run the code just to make sure it works. What's your name? My name is Ben. Get out of here. Very simple. Now, I wanna do something with our not logical operator. I'm gonna throw him in right here. Let's try it out. This is so weird, I, it really is. If not, <laughs> notice it changed color, it's a real logical operator. If not, name equals Ben, what's gonna happen? Well, only one way to find out, right? And also, guess what you think will happen. Pause the video and think about it. I'm not gonna wait for you, let's run the code right now. Run, what's your name? Let's try Ben. Come on in. <laughs> what just happened? Well, with our if statement, what we're saying is if the name doesn't equal Ben, then do this. If it does equal Ben, then do this. So we just basically did the opposite of what our original statement said. If name equals Ben, do this. Now we're saying if name not equals Ben, then do this. Now if that broke your brain a bit, me too. Because even now I have to sit here and go, wait, wait, if not, okay, I got it now. It takes a bit, right? And I think it might help if we talk about booleans <laughs> to make it make more sense. Let me explain. This whole time when I've been talking about controlling the flow of our Python programming, we've been dealing with if statements, right? We'll say if, Whatever this junk is, evaluates to, what do we say, true, do something. If the statement's false, do something else. These two bits of data here, true and false, are what we call Booleans, which I don't know why, but when I say Booleans, it makes me hungry. And I really don't have a reason anyways. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna eat after this video. And Booleans is actually a data type. So let's play with them for a second. Let's do it. So right here in our terminal here, I'm gonna clear my stuff out. Did you know that we can actually just type stuff in our terminal and do Python in real time? So do this. I want you to set a new variable, say the variable me, and have that equal your name. So for me, it'll be network chuck, the string network chuck. For you, it'll be Bob or Susan or Ben. Sorry, Ben. And set that variable. Bam. So right now, while we're in this terminal, in the context of just being here before we reset it, that's what the variable equals. Me is you. Huh? So if I call that variable just by typing in me, it calls network chuck. Now I'll try this. Type in me and then do double equal sign, equals, equals, do a space, and let's do the string of your name, network chuck, like we just did before. So the same exact thing before, but we have one extra equal sign. What do you think will be the output here? Let's try it out. True, how cool is that? Because the double equal sign is evaluating if something is true or false. And we said, hey, does me equal network chuck? And because we just said it there, it totally does. What happened to my voice? Just, I don't, I don't know what happened there. Now let's try this. I want you to print the type of that data. Now this, if you recall back from one of our earlier episodes, we did that. Let's try it real quick here. I'll say print, parentheses, type. We're printing our type function. Parentheses, me, 
equal equals network chuck. I'll close out my string with another quote, then parentheses. I think I need one more parentheses. Yes, okay, cool. So we're all good. When I print the type of that data, check this out. Ho oh, ho ho, a new data class. In earlier episodes, we saw strings, we saw integers, and we saw floating point numbers and all kinds of stuff. I think, think just those three. Now we have Boolean, true or false. And that's the data type we're working with when we're dealing with a lot of widths I just said, if statements. So now one more thing, try this. I want you to do me once more. We'll do our equals equals, our comparison operator, and compare that to a false thing. I'll do Nick, I'll do one for you, Nick. Like Nick, I'm not Nick. So when I run that, it's comparing the me variable to Nick. It's saying, hey, does this me variable equal Nick? It should return false, right? And it certainly does. That's a false statement. But now, <laughs> let's break your brain. Hit the up arrow and bring that up again. Put that not <laughs> operator in front of it, that not logical operator. Not me equals Nick. What will that evaluate to? Let's try it out. True. <laughs> it's, not, it's just a better way to understand it. Play with it, play around with things here. The reason this evaluated to true is we're saying, hey, is this statement true? Is me not equal to Nick? It's kind of like you saying, hey, I don't not want coffee, <laughs> right? That's kind of that's what it is in Python. Not me equals Nick. Now, one more quick fun thing. Last thing I promise. Here in our script, I use the not to basically do the opposite. Is the name not equal to Ben? There's actually another way to do it and a more common way to do it. It's actually something I use more often. Take the not away. No more nots. And let's work with our comparison operator. Remove your equals, and let's do exclamation point equal sign. That right there pretty much accomplishes the same thing. So we just used a logical operator, now we're using a comparison operator to do the same thing. This means not equals. If name does not equal Ben, then that makes more sense, right? I feel like if saying, if not name, that's like speaking pig Latin. But if we run it again, it does the same thing as not, right? Whew, okay. One more coffee break, because that was crazy. <laughs> because now, don't you just feel more powerful in Python? Because now you can control the flow of your programming. Comparison, logical, conditional operators to just do all kinds of stuff. And don't stop there. I'm gonna have in the link below some challenge labs for you to complete and accomplish. Because honestly, with Python and programming and anything in IT, pretty much anything in life, repetition will help you get there. It'll cement those ideas into your brain. Before long, you'll be coding like a wizard. Anyways, that's episode six. That's all I got. <laughs> Massive shout out to IT Pro TV, the sponsor of this video, this series. The other reason this is free on YouTube here. So if you haven't already, check them out. If you wanna study IT like me and get 30% off forever, use code Network Chuck. And also, hey, have you hacked the YouTube algorithm today? Let's make sure you do. Hit that like button, notification bell, comment, subscribe. You gotta hack YouTube today, ethically, of course. And yeah, that's really all I got. I'll catch you guys next time.